Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and if you're anything like me, you use your cutting mat a lot. And because of that, we need to give it some TLC. So I'll share with you some tips and tricks on keeping it clean. With our everyday sewing and quilting, we can end up with a lot of scraps and threads on our mat. So we can scoop them up with our hand, or I like to use a pastry cutter. Now you can get these in metal, and this one just happens to be in plastic. It's to cut pastries. This really does clean up all of the little threads and fabric. I just scoop it in and drop it in the garbage. This definitely holds a lot more than my hand. And I can go in and get everything off of that mat. You can also clean your mat with some batting. This was quilt batting that was just left over. And it really does pick up threads and fabric. So we can just take this to the garbage and pull them off and throw them away. Or when it gets too bad, we could just cut off a piece. I find the rolled batting is nice to have right beside your sewing machine. You can also use these dust magnets or one of these brushes for your clothing. So these are great ways just to keep that mat cleaned up of lint, threads, and little snippets. But every once in a while, we need to give our mat a good bubble bath. Dark fabrics such as red, blues, and blacks have a little excess dye in them, and they can leave that dye over time on the mat. So we can give them a good scrub. I like to use a nail brush and some good sudsy water that I would just do dishes in. And I give it a scrub. That nail brush really does give it a nice scrub. I didn't need a lot of soap, just like I would do dishes. So this does look like it would be really clean, but here's a fairly white cloth. I'm going to show you how dirty it really is. I'm just gonna wipe off all of those suds. And that's what I have from what appeared to be a clean mat. I'll give it a second scrubbing. And we'll be able to see it's much better. So we've had the first scrubbing and the second scrubbing. It's amazing how much dirt does come off our mats. This mat is a two-sided self-healing mat. So I will turn it over and do the next side. And after I've cleaned off the bubbles, I will definitely rinse it with some nice cool water. So that's my first mat that is now cleaned and ready to go. I have a second mat. This mat I use more for crafts and hobbies. So we definitely have some dirty marks. And if we look really close here, we're going to see some lines. Those lines are cut lines and they're cut right into the mat. The mat's a good mat. However, I was using a dull blade. It is so important that we cut with sharp blades. These are very, very thin little knives in circles. And over time, that knife is gonna dull down. The duller it gets, the harder we seem to push. We don't notice it because it happens slowly. The duller the knife, the harder we need to push to cut that fabric. And without that sharp edge and us pushing hard, we slice into this mat instead of gliding on top of it. So no matter how good your mat is, it can be ruined if we do not keep the blades sharp. But I'm going to give this the same scrub. If that nail brush 
is not enough, you can get these Mr. Clean erasers. Just looks like a white sponge. They're great for cleaning. So you get the sponge wet, but you don't need any soap. You just use water. And that will help take off any heavy buildup. And even though this is a self-healing mat, my blade was pushed too hard as a dull blade into that mat. So there is no recovering those lines. I have my self-healing double-sided cutting mats sit on top of a secondary mat. This is a big mat and it's called a pinnable mat. It's about 36 inches by 58 inches. This mat is not the same material as a rotary cutting mat. It is called a pinnable mat. Yes, it's a nice big mat, but it's a lot thinner. As a matter of fact, this can even be rolled and it will unroll. It's a great mat for protecting your surface if you're pinning. So you're pinning crafts, hobbies, or clothing. You can use a rotary cutter on this mat. However, because the fabric is different, it will not last as long. It is made with different fabrics, so it's not self-healing. However, it is still a great work surface. And every once in a while, I do need to cut something long, and this really serves that purpose. But if we look down at the bottom here, you're going to see it is really dirty. And I did end up with some of this fuzz right in the mat. When I was cutting the fabric, the blade was not sharp enough. So it pushed that fabric in those fibers right in the mat. And because this is pinnable, I definitely ended up with some furry little stuff right inside that mat. So there are a few ways we can get rid of this. Sometimes some good old fashioned scotch tape will take it off. Lint rollers sometimes will take them off. And you can always use an eraser. The eraser sort of rolls those fibers out. And it is important that we take off all of those little fibers before we give it a bubble bath. Because the wet fibers are a lot harder to get out. I can take off all that loose stuff and give it a good bubble bath. And I really did get a lot of dirt off. I've had this pinnable mat for about 10 years. It has protected my surface from anything that I've been doing. I use it mainly for crafts, hobbies, and dressmaking. But when it comes to rotary cutting, I do use a self-healing mat. This mat I have used thousands of times and you can still see the nice shape it's in. I use a sharp blade and I wash my mat every couple of months. Some people say to put your cutty mats in the bathtub to put some moisture back in them. But I have some pretty big mats so I just wet a towel, lay that towel on top, leave it overnight, and in the morning, just take it off. And I've added a little bit of moisture back into that mat. I really find a bubble bath every couple of months and a sharp blade is really all we need. So for everyday cleaning, we have just some common things we can get in the household. And every once in a while, it is good if we give it a bubble bath and clean off any extra dirt and stain. But most importantly, regardless if you have a pinnable mat or a two-sided self-healing cutting mat, is to use 
a sharp blade in our rotary cutters. And that way we're not gouging into the mat, we're just gliding on top and it's going to give us a lot more wear. So these are just some of the simple ways that I keep my mat clean. I do hope you find it useful and thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're scrubbing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.